every year that WWE has four huge pay-per-views that get the most buildup out of all of the pay-per-views. WrestleMania, the Royal Rumble, SummerSlam, and this month's pay-per-view, Survivor Series. And this week, we, the Haymakers, are going to be talking in great detail about that pay-per-view. Hello, everybody. My name is Nikki V, and joining me, as always, is... DJ Calcos. And Toon Critic Y2K. Oh, come on, you didn't go with the theming? What theme? This theme. Why didn't you do it? Okay, I'll, I'll just do it again. No, oh, yeah, don't worry. No, it's it's ruined. No, Con no, let me continue. Do it. Con it's ruined. Continue. Yeah, let, me it. let me do it. Let me it, do it. It's it, fine. <clears throat> I am too great. It's okay. Am I just really far away from the mic or something? Because that was unintentional. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie. Here we are discussing Survivor Series 2014. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I love Survivor Series. I think the whole five on five. You know, teams getting together, you know, to cause mass chaos and mass 10 people in the ring just beating the crap out of each other. I think that's great. When's the last time we had a good Survivor Series match, though? Like a good five on five Survivor Series match. Uh, that one where DX was captaining one, probably. Yeah. Back when it had like CM Punk and like ECW era CM Punk and um, the Hardys. Now, that was a team. Triple H, Shawn Michaels, the Hardys, and CM Punk. And that's a dream team right there. Yeah. And Against, uh, what was it? Uh, Edge, it Orton. Uh, Mike Knox. Mike Knox, Johnny, or either Johnny Nitro or John Morrison, and um, or, or Johnny Mundo. Um, What's his face? We don't know. So, yeah. Unimportant. Who Unimportant, yeah. We have kind of a lackluster card to go through, but since there's not really a lot of matches, I think we'll be able to burn through this pretty quickly. So let's start with the pre-show match. On the pre-show, we have the returning Fandango versus To Be Announced. Is, who's, who's To Be Announced? Is that like a new wrestler? Oh, no. To Be Announced has been around forever. Whenever To Be Announced is billed at a pay-per-view, To Be Announced usually kicks serious ass. Cause... No, man, to be announced. Okay, to be announced has the greatest finisher. It's called um, uh, We Don't Know at This Time. And it's <laughs> it's a fantastic, fantastic finisher. The crowd goes wild every time. I'd laugh if it was like Daniel Bryan or something. I you know, think it's Bad News Barrett. I hope so. It could be Bad News Barrett, but he's supposed to be just doing a thing at... Like he he's coming back as well for the pre-show, but he's just got a thing coming. I like honestly hope, uh, yeah, I honestly hope that it's not Bad News Barrett fighting because ba if Bad News Barrett comes back, he deserves better than a fucking pre-show with Fandango. No, 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 just it, the, his opponent doesn't matter. It what matters is that he um. You're right. Fandango doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, you're you're kind of right. <laughs> Oh fuck that theme! Okay, oh, so Fandango, Fandango, <laughs> how the uh, wait? Hang on, I just wanted to throw this quick joke in. Fandango, how the mighty have fallen. You beat Jericho at WrestleMania, and now you're on the pre-show. Mm. GG. Yeah, had a good run there. No re zero out of ten. Use flames to burn. <laughs> <laughs> I've said it before, but I'll say it again. Nerd. <laughs> Nerd. Is that going to be my new catchphrase? I thought I already had a catchphrase. You did. It's called Keep Getting Them Checks. Keep Getting Them Checks. <laughs> but uh, there, the way I see it, there's two ways that this is going to go. Either they're going to find somebody who is somehow even worse than Fandango, and this is going to be a squash match for Fandango, Ouch. or Fandango is going to be the one that gets squashed by a returning star. like either a Roman Reigns or a Daniel Bryan or maybe even a Bad News Barrett or somebody is just going to be coming back and squashing Fandango. Either way. RVD. 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 That'd be awesome. <laughs> Fun fact, Rob you Van Dam is Nikki's favorite wrestler. <laughs> oh, gee, we had no fucking idea. Yeah, you really know how to set me off, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> You, you can just press my buttons perfectly. Now, f hold on. Fandango is billed as new and improved Fandango. That's what they've been stressing throughout. Uh, they keep saying that he's new and improved. He's better than ever. 
So he's that got means Rosa Mendez on his side for some. Yep, that reason. means that means one of two things. One, he's getting a good push, which would be neat. I don't like Fandango that much, but it would be kind of neat just to see somebody fucking new in the main stage. Like that would be great. More new people, please. Two, the whole thing is a farce, and Fandango gets fucked in five seconds. I'm going to go with to be announced. I think that the whole new and improved thing is just a stupid gimmick uh, like they've done before with uh, lower lower mid-card wrestlers. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I'm going to have to go with uh, to be announced and his special finisher. We don't know at this time. I'm going to go with Calcos as well because usually when they do this kind of thing, yeah, it's usually because they're either bringing somebody back or they're bringing up somebody new. So... Yeah, to be announced is my thing. It'd be kind of cool if Bondongo came back and his new persona was that he hates with a burning passion his old persona and how he was kind of just like a laughing stock and everybody just kind of liked him ironically. And he just comes out with no music, plain black tights, and just beats the hell out of people. And it would just be like the crowd would fill in with his with his old music and saying his name, but it would just be like that'd be kind of kind of a cool angle to go at. But at the same time, it's probably not happening. TBA is going to kick some serious ass. Well, we're already in agreement on the pre-show match. I think we're off to a great start. <laughs> I Okay, just a quick prediction, or at the very least, hope, dream, pray. I really hope the to-be-announced ends up being Sami Zayn. Please? Ooh. Please. I actually didn't think of that. I, I would have cool. voted for Adrian Neville first, if only because larger audiences need to fucking see the red arrow. The yes. red arrow is the best finisher move of the last few years and if you haven't seen it go watch old episodes of nxt where he does it because it's fucking beautiful um but he can't move up because he has the nxt championship that's never really stopped anybody before remember Paige had the nxt women's title before she moved up and held both at the same time uh it's possible the women's title falls under different rules however uh i mean has it happened before with the mainstay title I um I don't recall. I remember reading something about Big E, but I don't think I don't keep up with NXT that well. I don't. Here's the thing: I don't keep up with it either. I barely watch it. Like I watch like the highlights that show up on YouTube, and that's about it. I you really motherfuckers watch better watch some motherfucking NX motherfucking T motherfuckers. Does somebody here like NXT? Fuck yeah, I love NXT. <laughs> Seriously, it's like watching the future, but now. I think they'll probably do something with NXT at this pay-per-view to coincide with uh, WWE 2K15 because they've been pushing NXT in terms of like um, the, the whole my career mode or whatever. Yeah, my well, prediction that, though. My prediction that, though. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go. Oh, sorry, I was just gonna say that there's a couple of NXT guys who are gonna be in uh, 2K15. I remember seeing I think Z Sami Zayn, Adrian Neville, I think the uh, Senshin guys. Rusev. Rusev. Yeah. Like there's a bunch of NXT guys who are gonna be in nxt with kind of good ratings so like I, I wouldn't be shocked if that that would happen either right all right let's get to the actual card our first match is a divas traditional survivor series elimination tag team match alicia fox e emma naomi natalia versus Paige, cameron layla and summer ray uh what's the matter you didn't have enough divas to fill out a five on five match at wwe because they had AJ and, and Nikki, and I don't think Brie could be involved. So literally, this is all the divas that we have, other than <laughs> the ones in NXT. This is pretty fucking sad. Uh, my heart aches for the divas division. Begging my dick. No, I'm not. I'm, I, we already did that. We already like made the joke about like all the others. <laughs> but yeah, I. No but kidding. okay. I just want to say, who was who was the one who predicted that there was going to be some sort of divas traditional tag team match? Yo. Yeah. The only he thing is, he fucking did it again. He the fucking did it again. No, I can't take credit because I thought that they would be captained by the Bella sisters. You still predicted a divas traditional tag team match, so that's half credit. Nah, uh, I'll take half credit, I guess. Honestly, yeah. okay, this we'll probably all agree on this, but who cares? I, yeah. I want to care. Holy shit, do I want to care? Because the WWE over the, the over the years has been getting so much flack for their female roster being not up to par for the for the longest fucking time. And even when they had wrestlers like Lita and Trish Stratus and a whole bunch of other really great wrestlers to fill out the card, they they keep getting flack. And the reason why is because 
Vince and whoever the fuck does all of the hiring for the Divas will not look at wrestling talent. They always look at looks first. They keep doing that. And I'm just like, look, this is a day and age where having a good female character isn't enough. That woman also needs to know how to wrestle. Literally, you should only be able to ask them two questions. One, what's your name? Two, can you wrestle? If one is a legal name and two is yes, they're hired. And what sucks is that they've done this once already with Karma. But Karma's gone now. Karma was probably the only diva they've ever hired that they did not hire based on looks. And she's gone yeah. now. I, I don't and that, know. And that was all. And that was probably just because she beast moded through TNA, and she was a, a really popular character in TNA. No, um, no. It actually the reason why they let her go is because. No, I mean uh, that's why they brought her in. Oh yeah, no. It they, was the they, pregnancy that it, because right. it was. It's not just the pregnancy because WWE was actually very eager to have her on, and they had very big plans for her. Um, according to some inside information. Uh, like, very, very big. She was going to be a Lita level diva for several years. The problem was, A, the pregnancy, and two, she miscarried, which kind of messed with her mind. Oh, she miscarried? Oh. She Ooh. did, and that's, that's, that's why. So, when it comes to karma being gone, it's not the fault of the WWE. It's, she's just a victim of really terrible circumstances. So, I harbor no hard feelings to the WWE or karma for that. Um, but it's super sad that they don't have her anymore because she would have changed the game. Anyway, uh, I'm going to vote for Paige's team because Paige is the only rest, uh, the only female there that can consistently put on good matches. So Paige's team. I'm going to go with Paige's team as well because I just don't see, I don't see how Alicia's team could benefit or anything. I don't, I don't quite see how, so I'm, I'm just going to go with Paige for this. I'm trying to see if there's one person on Alicia's team that Paige could have a rivalry with for TLC because I think that's what they're trying to do. At some at some point in this paper or in this match, Paige is going to get something personal is going to happen with Paige. One of the divas is going to do something that's going to make her go, "Oh, you motherfucker," and she's just going to go ape shit on that one, and that will be the rivalry for the next month. Isn't that what they were trying to do with Paige and Alicia Fox in the first place? Because Paige and, like, Fox were having, like, this friendship that went bad, and now I guess I can kind of sort of see why they set up this match, you know? Yeah. Maybe Natalia's that person, but I don't know. I want to see Natalia versus Paige. I think either Natalia or Naomi, because Emma and Alicia Fox, as okay as they are, can't really be up to no Naomi and Natalia's level. I'm you know what? Gonna... You know what? Better. Let's make a uh, let's make a fatal four way ladder match with Paige, Naomi, Natalia, and AJ ladder match for the Divas Championship. I am I'm I'm one hundred percent on board with that. Give me some fucking divas and ladders. Let's see this shit. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I was suggesting this at Hell in a Cell not very long ago, so. But yeah, I'm actually gonna go with Alicia's team because I think Natalia or Naomi is gonna do something to Paige. That's going to like get her knocked out of the match. And then once that happens, then her team's going to be Cameron, Layla, and Summer Rae. And then... <laughs> that made sense, right? The fuck kind of sound was that? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> that was the sound of Paige's team collapsing under everything. But, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Al Alicia wins. All right. Alicia's team wins. Next match is a... Now, this one seems a little interesting. A fatal four-way... Match for the Tag Team Championships. Golden Stardust versus the Usos versus Los Matadores versus Miz and Damian Mizdow. You know what this kind of match tells me? Oh, shit. We forgot to do a rivalry with the Tag Team Division. Quick, throw as many random tag teams together and call it a match. <laughs> yeah, Actually, that's, I'm, that's I'm all of their... That's not just some of their tag teams. That's all of them. That's really... Yeah, they, they forgot to put uh, Slater Gator in there, but yeah. Why would they put Slater Gator in there? Because they're no. better than fucking Los Matadores. Holy shit, what the fuck are they doing in there? Okay, look. I don't know. Some did you guys, did you guys see? Different. Hold on. Shut your fucking holes. Did you guys? <laughs> sorry. Uh, oh, Jesus. That guy, I'm sorry. That, that escalated quickly. <laughs> I, I, I apologize. Did you okay. guys see um, last Monday's Raw? Yeah. I saw a little bit of it. So you guys saw this match, right? Because this exact match happened on last week's Raw. Yeah, only it was like a four-on-four -four match. Yeah, it was a fatal four-way tag team match. Yeah. 
It was yeah. the exact that match was good. No, it was an eight man tag team match. Yeah, it was an eight man tag team match, and it it was good. Like all four teams performed really really yeah. well, including Los Matadores. Yeah, but the thing is, when was the last time Los Matadores won a match in two on two tag team? They really I know, haven't. which is a shame, I think, because Los Matadores they they were given a really stupid fucking gimmick. Like Carlito and Primo were good, but then when they Carlito left, they just stuck Primo with Epico or whatever, and then bam, Los Matadores. Now here's the thing: shitty gimmick, but great wrestlers. There's no denying that they are great yeah. wrestlers. Just given a really shitty gimmick, meaning people won't really buy into it. I completely forgot. Wait, I, Primo is part of this. Yeah, Primo and Epico. Oh, wow. I completely forgot that he existed. Somebody's Whoops. phone is ringing. <laughs> that was just my Sports Center app. Sorry. It's, You're so it's professional. Fine. Anyway, <laughs> I'm how, sitting on my phone now. <laughs> just a thought how great would it be if there were a swerve and Matadores took up the title? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can't see that happening. I can't but that would be hilarious. It off. I'm no, I'm sorry. The Miz and Mizdow take the titles. I actually see that happening. I could see that happening too. Because the Miz and Mizdow have been one of the most entertaining things that the WWE has produced in years. Damian Mizdow is super fucking over at this point, and they might be rewarded for being so ironically enough, awesome. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm actually going to pick Miz and Mizdow to win this match. I, I 100% agree. I'm picking with Miz and Mizdow because every single time I look at at, at uh, Miz uh, Sandow and and look at him and go like, oh, this gimmick is going just wearing too thin. He does something like when Miz does has gets side slammed by the Matadores and the Matadores pose. Mizdow just gets in the middle of the ring and flops over. I just look at that and it it makes it makes me feel like I'm ten years old again. And honestly, <laughs> that's that's one of the best things that I can ask for the WWE. Just make me feel like I'm ten years old again, or actually fourteen years old again, because that's when I was watching. Just make me make me feel young again when I watch wrestling. And the Miz and Mizdow do that for me. I don't know how they're pulling it off either, because this gimmick is. Dumb. I think we can all agree that this gimmick is kind of dumb. You want to you want to really know how? Insane. Yeah, you want to know how? It's because Miz, uh, Damian Sandow and the Miz are much better personalities than we give them credit for. The Miz has a very great show off, full of himself personality, and Sandow is just a good fucking actor and very dedicated to his craft. Yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of true. They do work really well together. It, it's it's just a shame that Miz is not that good in the ring. Just if only that was a little better. But Miz and Miz Dow, I think win. You you were still going. I'm actually gonna go different, and I'm gonna say that Golden Stardust retain. Mm. I don't that... know. I I feel that they could probably still hold on to the tag team belts for a little while longer, and they'll probably lose them at the next pay per view or something. That would be the ultimate sign that they really didn't have anything planned for the tag team division this month. Which is really disappointing, I think. And I think even if there is a swerve, it's not going to really ignite anything because this is really all the tag teams we have. It's I think people are practically begging for the Ascension to come up by now. Yeah. Because the only thing that can save the tag team division is the Ascension from what I've seen. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a sad truth. But yeah, now that Rowan and Harper are singles it up yeah. which so they, I, just, I mean I, they deserve their singles push but still. oh absolutely by the yeah, way they do. who who would have thought luke harper would win an individual title before bray wyatt that was a shock and it was the intercontinental championship no less the belt that bray wyatt was supposedly supposed to win yeah where is that it's like I can picture like uh, just Triple H walking up to Bray Wyatt with like the title belt. Well, I know you've worked really hard for this, and I think you deserve it. And he just turns and gives it to like Luke Harper, just like here you go. I hope <laughs> you do well with it. And Bray Wyatt just looks up and him just gives him like this big like eyes with lasers glare at him. <laughs> uh. And meanwhile, like Eric Rowan is just like, um. Uh... Can I be on Cena's team? Yeah, go ahead, sure. And then Bray Wyatt's just like, what the fuck? Why don't I get? Oh, a match with Dean Ambrose. Well, you know what? I'll Speaking take that. That's good. 
Speaking of. Yes. Dean Ambrose versus Bray Wyatt. Th- th- this ought to be interesting. I don't think, by the way, we should probably also address this. Did anybody see Bray Wyatt interfering in the Seth Rollins and Ambrose Hell in a Cell match? No. I, I saw it. Yeah. No, who saw it coming? I mean. Oh, oh, saw it coming. No. No. I didn't I didn't expect that. I I thought that there was going to be some shenanigans, but I thought that they would be from the authority. But the only shenanigans there was like Kane had a fire extinguisher, but that's it. But no, I didn't think that Wyatt Wyatt of all people would show up. It happened. It, it did. And this rivalry is turning out pretty great. I'm like, I like the rivalry so far. Yeah, I'm liking it, but I'm not sure how much more they could do. They might be able to get one more pay-per-view out of this rivalry, but afterwards, Ambrose is set for bigger and better things. Look, look, look. You have Dean Ambrose and Bray Wyatt, whom in Kayfabe and in real life are pretty... Okay, in Kayfabe, they're both extremely crazy. In real life, they're crazy enough to be wrestlers. <laughs> Bray Wyatt wins. That's who I'm predicting. I, Bray Wyatt wins. That's who I'm predicting. TLC fucking tables, ladders, and chairs match between the two. Come on! Why yeah. would you squander that kind of an opportunity? A tables, ladders, and chairs match between those two would be on the level of Edge and Cena in 2006. You really think so? It's fucking Dean Ambrose and Bray Wyatt. Do I need to say anything else? Touche. Touche. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm thinking Wyatt wins if only to lengthen this rivalry by another month so we can get that epic Ambrose-Wyatt TLC match. Yeah, Bray Wyatt wins so that Dean Ambrose can face him again at TLC and win and then go on to the road to WrestleMania and then do his stuff. Right. This, this is, is a, We have to admit this is kind of a filler feud for Ambrose till the Royal Rumble. Yeah, yeah, I can I can kind of agree with that. It's it's like the WWE went, okay, uh, we need somebody for Ambrose to, so that we can keep him relevant until uh, the Royal Rumble. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Oh, yeah, there's another crazy guy on the opposite end of the wrestling morality scale. Let's put him and, and him and together, and boom! It works, though. I love, I love the rivalry so far. I love the promos that they're going with. I love the... I guess sort of the build-up to it, I think, is going to be interesting. And these two are great wrestlers, so I think there's going to be a great match between them. I love the fact that it seems like it's getting personal. Like, you remember uh, CM Punk and Jericho? Yeah. Back the I, wouldn't com- I wouldn't compare, I wouldn't compare like, that just yet, even though, like, I guess we brought up that Ambrose's father is in jail and something about alcohol and yeah, that- or whatever. All right, next match is AJ Lee defending the Divas Championship against Nikki Bella. Boo! I am not saying boo earns! Boo! AJ, please save this match. Based AJ, please, just Black Widow Nikki 30 seconds in and save us from this torture. Yeah, the Nikki and Bree stuff, I'm pretty sure... I'm just going to go with AJ because I'm pretty sure Bree's going to pull some crap where she's just like, oh, you know what? I'm tired of this. I'm going to cost Nikki the match. Oh, guess what? My servitude's over. Diva's chairs match at the tail I, I don't know. Uh, Here's the actually, thing. Her servitude actually, actually isn't up for another week. Yeah, it ends like the day after Raw, so she's still going to be like indebted to her. And to quote Bad News Barrett, I got some bad news for you. I think Nikki's going to win this. It- Why? Okay. Oh, that's right. Oh, okay. Actually, you know what? I read a report that, that AJ is supposedly leaving after Survivor Series. Oh. Yeah. Nope, yeah. I read she's a- staying. Nope, she's staying. <laughs> no, I don't. I are you just, just I, Calcos, are you I, just no, saying no, no. that because if you say it, you, you might make it true? No, look, hold on. Hold on. Uh... Okay, I'm just going to ramble on and talk while I pull up with this, but you're right. AJ was planning on leaving. Um, but give me one second. I'm going to look for it right now. I know it's here. Come fucking on. Uh, shit. Okay. I also believe Nikki's going to going to going to win and she's going to win the motherfucking the motherfucking motherfuck because <laughs> well, she uh Bree is still indebted. So she's probably going to be uh she's probably going to interfere and then Nikki's going to win the championship 
and then one of the most hated feuds of this decade is going to continue because the WWE really doesn't give a shit. They want to push Total Divas. That's that's the entire oh reasoning behind all of this. They want to push Total Divas, and from what wait, I can wait, tell, wait, 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 wait. I thought there was the rule that from okay, I read a report that Vince said that she was making a rule that nobody on Total Divas can win the title because they do the filming like I think months before. So having Total Divas show up and none of them have the title or events lining up and stuff would work. Yeah, but how would that how would that work? Isn't pretty much every diva on Total Divas? Like the only one that isn't, I think, is AJ. Yeah. No, uh, it, AJ's the only one. So shit. what is AJ just gonna hold on to the title forever? I'd be down no, for that. Here's but... what here's what's gonna happen. Here's what's gonna happen. AJ okay, here's the thing. Here's my prediction. I think that AJ is going to win because Brie is going to probably get fed up with Nikki and screw her over. AJ retains. Then she decides to leave because she thinks there's nobody better than her. So she leaves and vacates the title. Eh, that could work. And but... then we have like some stupid battle royal or something in TLC to find the new Divas champion. Honestly, I think that the reason I think Nikki is going to win is because A, they're super committed to this Nikki – uh, Brie rivalry and they need something anything to like raise the stakes on it so they thought so they might be thinking uh, if they put the Divas title in there uh, then Nikki and Brie could compete for it uh, maybe a TLC or maybe even extend it even farther than that and the on WrestleMania top of, maybe <laughs> Ugh. but also because um, there, there's just Brie is in Nikki's corner, and I could very easily see Brie doing something to uh, help AJ win. And you got to remember, Paige is still out there, and she could do something like, if I can't hold the Divas title, then neither can you, AJ, and just keep that rivalry going. Because I, I think if they if if Paige doesn't single out somebody from the Divas tag team match then she might go back to aj and keep that rivalry going i just don't i just don't want nikki to win even though i'm pr I, I totally agree with you guys and i if i think that's what's going to happen my pick is still aj because i just don't want nikki to win <laughs> nobody wants nikki to win i'm picking nikki with a heavy heart is that it's... the same for you cow Cross? yeah nikki I, I predict nikki and as much as it fucking pains me to do that i i have to pick nikki my yeah. common sense says so all right, and now we come to the main event, and you get, this is pretty much the only match we even give a shit about at oh, this point. Well, besides Ambrose and Wyatt. Besides that, but this is like the big one. We have a traditional Survivor Series match, the likes of which we haven't seen in like God knows how long, according to the announcers. It like is a year? Yeah, like a year. A year? <laughs> it is Team Cena with the team of John Cena, Dolph Ziggler, Big Show, Eric Rowan, and Ryback. Eric Rowan is like the odd one out here. Like, what yeah, I, I, asked you guys this, here. I asked you guys <laughs> get me Seamus on Team Cena, damn it! But sir, Seamus is in the hospital with a with an injury. Well, then get me upside down, Seamus, damn it! No, 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 no! It could be, literally be just like Vince will just be standing there, like you know what? I have an idea. Whoever turns around that corner is on Team Cena, and Eric Rowan just casually walks around. Just you like, completely hey, missed my joke. I no, I got the joke. I got no, the upside joke. down Sheamus. I totally got. No, trust me. Okay. I got it. But well, I, I asked you guys this the other day, and I never got an answer. Why is Eric Rowan on this team? Was he just there because Luke? Because. Harper? Because, yes, because there's also on Team Authority is Seth Rollins, Kane, Mark Henry, Rusev, and Luke Harper. So I there think was... that the only reason the only reason Eric Rowan is on the, on the other side is because Luke Harper is on the other side. And the stipulation in this match is a double stipulation, actually. If Team Authority loses, they will no longer be in power. But, and this, this is announced on SmackDown, if Team Cena loses, all team members will be fired from WWE except John Cena. Okay, well, we all know that that one was just an additive by Zach because we know that if Cena, C Cena getting uh, <laughs> Cena, no, no, no that, that was actually what Triple H said. He's not going to fire Cena, but he's going to fire everybody on his team. Oh, okay. Well, that that would be very interesting. But it in any be. case, uh, in any case, uh, just going back to the whole Eric Rowan being on the face side, there was a theory that was that I read on r slash uh, squared circle that 
honestly is fucking awesome. And I really wish they did some exposition for this because it's a really great theory. But think about it. Look at the pasts of Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. Luke Harper, massive fucking sociopath. Guy didn't give two fucks. And you have Eric Rowan, who was abused as a child, came to Bray Wyatt, scared and alone, looking for the power to to control himself and control his demons. So, when Bray Wyatt set them free, said he was done with them, you're free, go do what you please, Luke Harper immediately said, fuck you, Bray Wyatt, and became a cog in the machine. The machine that Bray Wyatt immediately, um, like, spent years telling Luke Harper to not join, to dismantle. That That's what Wyatt wanted. Luke Harper said, no, I'm gonna join it. I want Rage more power. Machine. Yep. Now, Eric Rowan, however, is looking at this and going, you're going against fucking Bray Wyatt? Are you kidding? So, it makes sense that Eric Rowan would join Team Cena because he's showing Luke Harper that it's not the right way. He's going against Bray Wyatt's teaching. Sort right. of like a uh, sort of like a Star Wars Revenge, uh, Revenge of the Sith kind of moment. You were supposed to destroy the Sith, not join them. Are we really comparing these two to, like, fucking Star Wars, really? Hey, is, is this a moment we're having right here? It's just the theory, man. No, no, I, I, I'm, I'm not saying I'm on board with it. I'm on board with this theory. It. I'm just surprised that Eric Rowan is a face, but then considering that he had that little moment with Grumpy Cat. Let's also, before we get... No, shut your no, hole. No, let's, let's not Grumpy Cat. Let's, let's never Grumpy Cat. Let's talk about why the fuck Grumpy Cat was on Monday Night no! Raw. Can we talk about this for just five minutes, please? No! no Michael Cole has renamed... Okay, Grumpy the Cat. <laughs> Grumpy the Cat. That's something I would expect from fucking somebody who doesn't grasp the English language. That's it's something I'd expect from fucking Mike Adamley or some shit. Or Vlad Kozlov. <laughs> I love Grumpy the Cat. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, can we focus on the actual match? Okay, fine, fine. We'll rage about we'll rage about that some other time, I guess. Okay, to be fair, Grumpy Cat didn't do anything super important. She was just kind of there, so I'm okay with it. I mean, the real nightmare happens the raw after Survivor Series, as we all know. Mary the fucking cable guy is coming. What? What, 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 what? Oh, Nick, you didn't know. Larry the Cable Guy is coming to Monday Night Raw because I read a report that they're doing this to promote Jingle All the Way to with Larry the Cable Guy and Santino Morella. I wish I was fucking joking, but there is a Jingle All the Way to with Larry the Cable Guy and Santino Morella. Look at this shit. I have a picture of the DVD cover right here. It's like shit. This is worse than Cars fucking 2, people. Larry the Cable Guy can't fucking make anything work at this point. Oh my god. This is fucking... Okay, Larry the Cable Guy, you can only be redeemed if you're like, um, fucking, uh, Wayne Brady and take an RKO like a champ. Because Wayne do. Brady, Please. I don't know if you guys saw that, but Wayne Brady, when he guest starred uh, back in like 2010, motherfucker took an RKO, RKO like a boss. RKO? Sorry. Yeah, but what the he fuck didn't... is an RKO? Is that like an artichoke RKO? Shut up. <laughs> but the thing is, Wayne Brady didn't need to re like uh, compensate for anything. Wayne Brady was always fucking awesome. Yeah, I know, exactly. But still... I agree. He did take it like a champ. Yeah. All right. Maybe he'll take. Maybe maybe the the cable guy will take a uh, a pile driver. Can he get curb stomped by Seth Rollins? I think yeah, that'll, that'll work. That'll work. Anyway, back to the match. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll go first. With this the way that this is looking, I could see Cena's team winning, if only because we can see the remnants of Team Authority get, like, scattered, and Vince comes to power, and they actually decide to go with the Vince versus Triple H storyline that we were, uh, I guess, kind of discussing at some point before. So I'm for Team Cena. I want to see some chaos, and I want to see that this supposed uh, TLC match with uh, Cena and, um, what was it, Cena, Rollins, and um, Orton, yeah, right? Orton, yeah. Okay, I just want to see that happen. I And I think Team Authority losing and having everything just finally crumble will probably do a lot of good things. For one, Seth Rollins can go off on his own to do his own thing. Kane can just say, you know what, I'm done and leave. Mark Henry can 
Rusev can, you know, <laughs> probably do. <laughs> Rusev can fight Ryback. Yeah, Rusev can probably. Ooh, you know what? That actually just gave me an idea. What if Ryback's the one to, like, defeat Rusev? That's what we've been saying on r slash squared circle for weeks. I'm down for this. I would like to see that. Because maybe that would finally give Ryback, like, something credible, I guess. Other than him just fucking losing all the time. Well, he, he seems to be back and better be than before. Like, he, he's moved on from the whole Ryback still thing. And he, he actually feels like he's back to being a main eventer. So he's yeah. he's diet Roman Reigns for right now. <laughs> he, he's Roman Reigns until Roman Reigns shows up. Yeah, then Roman Reigns just spears Ryback and Ryback is right back down in the mid card. <laughs> <laughs> he spears him right back to the mid card. <laughs> <laughs> OK, right now I'm going to vote for Teen Cena, if only because here's the thing, guys, the authority angle has been going on for 15 years. It needs to stop now. Please. It's been 15 fucking years. It's old. It's tired. And it's not... It will never reach the level of Stone Cold versus Mr. McMahon. You cannot put lightning in a bottle twice like that. And for the authority to leave, so Triple H can take care of NXT and talent relations, and Stephanie can take care of whatever she does, and I know she has a busy schedule, she does do things, I just don't know exactly what, so don't kill me, and the other wrestlers, Rusev, Luke Harper, Seth Rollins, Kane, Mark Henry, all of them can go do whatever, Kane can retire, Seth Rollins, Seth Rollins can focus on Randy Orton and Dean Ambrose. Mark Henry can also retire. Uh, Rusev can defend the United States Championship against Heath Slater again. And then Heath Slater wins for the United States title. I would love to see that because the fucking pop would be nuts. Yeah, you would. You yeah, Only in our dreams, I think, at this point. <laughs> The WWE needs more shockers. They need more swerves. Everything has been just 100% predictable. And I know, we're older fans. We're a bit more jaded. We know what's coming up. But at the same time, if something is smart, I know it's smart. And even if it's predictable, I'm still going to cheer in the silence of my apartment because it's still awesome. Heath Slater winning the championship, the United States championship, would be a moment to remember as long as they do something good with it. Yeah, hey. but uh, honestly, Ugh. Ryback winning uh against Rusev for the championship would also be pretty great. Uh, and Luke Harper can, I'm not Defend sure what the Luke Intercontinental Harper can do. title. Yeah, actually, yeah, Luke Harper does have the IC title, so uh, I don't get why they gave him the IC title so quickly, and especially at like Ziggler's expense. Though Kalkos, you were saying that it took like a lot of people to beat down Ziggler, and they've been pushing Ziggler like really, that, really that, hard. That yeah, they have. Well, actually, so, no, Ziggler's been losing matches left and right since since he got the IC title. He's just like, winning guess. every title match. Yeah, I think he lost... Uh, okay, look. So if, so, if someone wants to, they can bring up statistics, but I believe that he's lost every single match that wasn't a title defense. Again, my money goes with Team Cena, because I want to see the whole authority angle go away. It's done, it's over, it's tired. It just needs to stop and not be replaced with something else. Just stop it. It's over. Done. Agree. I, I hate to say this. I know that I've been kind of on the downside of all of these, but I still think the authority is going to win because there is just too many like loose ends that haven't been tied if the authority were to just go away right now. Uh, what about the return of uh, Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton? They're all going to have beefs with the authority. The authority specifically, not just individual members. They want all of the fuckers to go down. So they... I, I wouldn't be surprised if after this, uh, a couple of those guys were to come back and form a tag team, and at TLC we get maybe Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan versus Seth Rollins and Kane. Could be interesting. That no, would they're be... saving they're saving yeah. Daniel Bryan at the very least for the Royal Rumble. I think Roman's going to be the same deal. Either way, there's still just there's still some pieces left that are that need to be expanded on, and on top of that, if you've been watching. Triple H throughout all of this, you've you might notice that he's been having a tinge of 
oh shit, maybe we aren't going to win this. Yeah, and we could see in that promo that he did. Like he think he's subtly thinking that this might that he might not win. And I think that if he ends up winning this, then he's gonna end up coming back around and be like, ha, I told y'all motherfuckers that I was gonna win. That's what we got for Survivor Series. Uh like I said, not a very especially important card, unlike I think the last um card from Hell in a Cell. So actually, yeah. actually, I must butt in. This is probably the most important card they've had all year from a business standpoint. Mm. Yeah. Because oh, okay. for the United States and many parts of the world, this pay-per-view is free. Survivor Series is 100% free for anyone in the United States with an internet connection. So they're going to be getting a lot less revenue from this um, pay-per-view. But a lot more people are going to watch it, which means yeah. this pay-per-view is... Survivor Series is massive because if it's not very good, those people that watch it are not going to stay subscribed to the network and they're not going to bother with any more pay-per-views. But if it's just regular good, some of them might stick around. Others may not. They have to hit this one out of the park, you guys. It is so important that this pay-per-view delivers in a scale that we haven't seen in a very, very, very long time. Because if they don't, if they don't nail this one to the grindstone, then the WWE will continue to hemorrhage WWE Network subscribers. So they, they have to make this work. It has to work. Badly. Uh I understand that, dude, but if they were really going to go all out for this, and if it's, I understand it's free, this is a great chance for them to bring in people. If they were going to do that, it really seems like they could have gone more all out with this. Yeah, they could have. A whole back stacked a card. They could have brought just... people back early. They could have brought Reigns, Brian, Orton, Jericho, all yeah, of but them back. You don't, you don't know how um, Brian and um, Reigns are feeling. I mean, we don't know. Brian it might be ready to come back. Reigns, I have no idea. Orton's gone for right now, shooting a movie. Um, and yeah, but it's a WWE movie. He, that that was our, you know that's what in house deal. You know what? Let's just leave it up to fake. Let's let's just end this right here. If that's all right with y'all. Yeah. No, it's not all right. Not all right at all. Subscribe to all of us. Do comments and all the other stuff. And we're gonna go. We're we're gonna go come for Calcos. Like I'm. <laughs> Why WWE? I loved you so much. If you, think, if, you, if you think the WWE is in the shitter right now, like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah.